looking forward to this all day because we were saying it last segment. We talk to you every week about the Eagles and then about the opponent. But we've never really had the chance to talk to you, at least in this show of Kincaid and South Tunis, about the rest of the league. So you, like all of us, had the chance to just sit down and watch football yesterday from 1 o'clock until the end of the Sunday night football game. And so we want to pick your brain about some of these teams because you are a football guy. So let's start with the big one. The Lions beat the doors off of the Jaguars. We're trying to find out if you can answer this question. Are the Eagles and Lions, as of right now, the only two teams where you go, yeah, they are legitimate teams that can get to the NFC Championship game so far on November the 18th? Absolutely. They're in a tier of their own, Andrew, and I think I have the Lions ranked slightly above the Eagles right now. They are a team that is just so in sync. Their offense and their defense are playing complimentary football. Jared Goff threw four touchdowns. They're Jamison Williams and and Amon St. Brown, both over 100 yards. And I I just think that they're a team right now that are are operating at such a high efficiency rate. But I would like to see what they're able to do outside of the cozy confines of, of their uh, of their dome stadium, but it's, it's kind of hard to put any team in front of them right now in the NFC. When I look at the Lions, though, they don't seem like like the cozy confines thing. They look like a team that's just as built for uh, an outdoor game in January as any team in the NFL. Right, and, and but the one drawback, John, the one thing that I will say about the Lions is the quarterback, Jared Goff. Right now, he looks to be super efficient right now. He's keeping that offense on schedule, but Unlike Jalen Hurts, Jared Goff is a quarterback where if things don't necessarily go his way early, there's a turnover, a fumble, you know, a drive stalls. Sometimes that sits in his mind, and he's not able to overcome that, whereas Jalen Hurts, one of the more remarkable things about him is he's able to still keep that offense on schedule regardless of what happens early in the game. He lives drive to drive, where I think that if you can provide some pressure on Jared Goff, maybe force a turnover too early on, it changed the whole complexion of the game. By the way, some news in the NFL. Daniel Jones, they just announced, will be benched. Uh, they have a potential out after this season. Tommy DeVito is oh. going to be the starting quarterback over Drew Locke. So Tommy DeVito will be the starting quarterback uh, of the New York Giants. But something to keep an eye on, obviously, for... Makes no sense. Well, it does if you're the Giants and you want Why? the highest pick you can possibly get. Tommy DeVito sucks. Yeah, Tommy yeah. DeVito's. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's so bad. I watched him play the Eagles pretty, uh, pretty well. Um, Andrew, game. another game that I had a close eye on yesterday was the 49ers Seahawks game because the Niners are a team that I will always keep an eye on until they are officially dead. Now, they're not officially dead, but they're now in dead last of the NFC West. What do you make of this 49ers team? Is it straight up health is it just a lot of games over a lot of years because they've had a lot of nfc championship and super bowl appearances what's the deal with the san francisco 49ers and can i start sleeping soundly at night <laughs> I, I think it's so hard to i think that really illustrates how hard it is to stay on top for so long look christian mccaffrey is back i just think that they had so many distractions going into the season andrew that it sort of bled into the season obviously they struggled with some injuries early on and they weren't, they're not really able to overcome that, whereas other teams in their division got better and they're able to, to keep pace with the 49ers. They're not that juggernaut that they were in the past. And I think right now, you're, they, they, you, know, you see the book out on them a little bit, and I think teams have figured them out. So they're not necessarily the, uh, the imposing NFC heavyweight that they have been in recent years. The, uh, when, when you watch the rest of the league, what is, it, what is something you see glaringly that you wish the Eagles did like some of the best contenders? I just look at the offenses, John, and how efficient they are. The whole playbook seems to be at their disposal. Teams are getting off to fast starts. Like, for me, what I really keyed in on, and this should be no surprise to you guys, I had my yellow legal pad out. Of course, I expected that, yeah. Of the Rams game, because I want to give you guys the full breakdown later on when we speak this week and be as detailed as I can. But I think that, for me, when I'm watching the Rams offense, for example, you just see it. It, it just it's just so rhythmic and cohesive, whereas the Eagles, they had six points going into the fourth quarter on, on, on Thursday night, and obviously they were able to, to find a way to, to get a win, and Saquon Barkley was a big part of that. But they need to be able to find a way to, to be uh, that dominant force throughout the game. And what I saw from, the, from a team like the Rams, what you see from the Buffalo Bills, largely is a team that they're, they're much more well-rounded offensively. So that, to me, really stuck out. Are you somebody that looks back – 
on an Eagles schedule and says, man, that was a bad loss. Because the Falcons lose to the Broncos yesterday 38-6 to to the point where Kirk Cousins was put to the bench and Michael Penix came out. Or do you just always look forward? Well, for me, I always just I just look forward and see who the Eagles are playing, and I base it off of that. But yeah, when you when you see the manner in which the Atlanta Falcons lost yesterday, Andrew, it's, you look at back at how the Eagles play them, and that it came down to that drop and that decision making late in the game, not just the drop, but that that was a tough loss for the Eagles. And now looking about when you're crunching the numbers and how difficult it could be later in the season, yeah, that, that's one that I'm sure they would like to have back. But I, I think for the Eagles, they were a different team then than they are, than they are right now. So I don't know that they're really taking any stock into that. And, and I, I really don't either when I sort of analyze the season as a whole. I had folks on Twitter last night still arguing the Falcon game outcome, saying, yeah, it was still smart to throw that ball. I, I, I beat my head against the wall and then uh, continued. When you, when you look at the birds, and if, they're, if you said they're the two seed, if I told you right now they're going to be the two seed, do you think their chances of going to a Super Bowl are fairly comparable to if they would be a one seed. Fairly comparable. Not, we know it's not yeah. going to be even, but fairly comparable. I, I do. I, I think it, the Eagles right now are a team that's built to travel. They are, I, it, it sounds incredible to say, John, but I still don't think they play their best, most complete game. The best is yet to come from that offense. I think they're still ironing some things out. They've established their identity as a, as a running, run first team, which always travels, especially when you get into the, you know, the postseason. So to me, I think, yeah. It's a little bit more difficult being the two seed, obviously, but I think if the Eagles can go toe to toe with anybody in the NFC, it just has to be a lot more consistent offensively. I think the defense right now is in a really good place. All right, a lot of the time when we talk about the rest of the league, we focus on the NFC and, and how it can impact the Eagles. But dream with me for a second, Andrew. Oh, I love dreaming. It's it's <laughs> January twenty seventh, twenty twenty five, Monday morning. We wake up. You're going to come do the show with us, right? The yeah. Eagles just beat X in the NFC Championship game. You got a chance to watch the entire league yesterday. Who's the AFC team in the Super Bowl that the Eagles would be facing? And if you say the Chiefs, that's a fine answer. Who else could it be if you do say the Chiefs? No, I'm going to say the Buffalo Bills. And you can also make a case for, and this is sort of a, you know, a shot in the dark, but the way the, the Pittsburgh Steelers are playing right now, that defense with T.J. Watt, oh, yeah. Mink, Mink and Fitzpatrick, I mean, they are a very fast-flowing defense. They can do just enough offensively to really keep pace and keep this keep the score low. But I'm, I'm going to say the Buffalo Bills because, to me, I think Josh Allen is the MVP of the NFL right now. He could certainly yep. make a case for Saquon Barkley. He's, uh, he's definitely on his way. But I think the Bills are a very, very complete team right now. They have more of a running game that they've had in years past. Now, for, for me, it always becomes, can Josh Allen make the critical plays in the big moments, which has always been his drawback, I'm starting to think that he can because you're seeing that in a game yesterday where the stakes are high and in high leverage moments. So I do believe that they're going to be the team that emerges from the AFC. Anything you're uh, worried about on the injury report or anything going into this Rams week? Everybody you think going to be fine? Well, it, it looks to me, John, at least coming out of that game, and we haven't gotten any information yet because the last we've heard anything from the Eagles was Thursday. Sure. Uh, Nick Sirianni is going to speak today, but – it looked like they got out of that game largely unscathed. And I think that when you're going across the country to the West Coast, that that is going to be a very difficult task. And you look at the way the Rams played yesterday, and they have a very young defense. They have pieces like uh, they have a rookie safety named Cam Kinchins, who may be the only player who keeps Quinn Mitchell back from getting defensive rookie of the year. They have two pass rushers in Jared Burst, and, and, uh, and they have another kid from Florida State as well at defensive tackle, and, uh, Braylon Trice, who had a sack yesterday. So they have uh, young pieces there that I think you combine that with traveling over the West Coast. The Eagles do need to be fully healthy going into that week because it's going to be a tough one. Andrew, you're the man. We and appreciate it as LA. always. You are going to L.A. When are you flying out Saturday? Saturday morning, 6 a.m. All right, so we get our Friday DeCheco conversation for the hour, and then we will bug you bright and early Monday morning. 